Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. In the wake of a deadly summer, folks across the country are on edge and threats of more mass shootings are being taken very seriously. We'll tell you about the two arrests this weekend that may just have stopped two more attacks. Flames tear through a southwest Bakersfield strip mall, destroying several businesses. How soon other stores nearby that suffered damage could reopen? It's a perfect tank of gas getaway now that school may be back in session. A nearby destination that will take you back in time to the ice age. Kevin's on the road this morning. This is Monday, August 19th, 2019. Good morning. Great to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher, and we'll be checking in with Kevin to see where he landed this time coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, but first we're taking a look at your forecast, and it's going to be a kind of a cool start to your work week. We saw the triple digits over the weekend. Very pleasant out there right now at 68 degrees with 40% humidity. Winds out of the north northwest at three miles per hour in Bakersfield. And here's what you can expect uh, this morning and throughout the afternoon. We're going to warm things up into the mid 90s uh, by the evening hours, but we're going to be far from the triple digits, which is the good news. So enjoy uh, the day, especially the morning hours. Open up the windows, let that cool air come in. Uh, Before we start to warm up a little bit this afternoon, of course, we're still going to be in the 90s, uh, but not in the triple digits. Right now, take a look at Tehachapi. 55 degrees right now to start off your Monday morning. 51% humidity and winds are calm. Here's what you can expect over the next several hours. We're going to keep it in the mid-80s for the most part throughout the afternoon, uh, hitting about 84 by 1 p.m. We will have a look at your full forecast coming up, plus Kevin's tank of gas getaway on this Monday. That's coming up in just a few minutes. But first, let's have a look at your morning commute. All right, thanks, Alex. And we're taking a look outside at White Lane and Highway 99, where traffic is moving smoothly there. And according to the CHP traffic page, no incidents to report. So that's the good news. Right now, everything is open and clear. Just be sure to buckle up. We'll have another check of your traffic in about 15 minutes. National news now. The threats came on social media and via text message. They're just the latest in a rash of threats across the country. This weekend, police thwarted not one, but two suspected mass shootings. Blaine Alexander has more. This is what police in New Middleton, Ohio, found when they raided the home of a 20-year-old suspect. AR-15s, a rifle with a bayonet, a bulletproof vest, and plenty of ammo. This Instagram video tipped off authorities. The self-proclaimed white nationalist is seen firing shots, tagging the local Jewish community center. It was implying that he was going to be identified as a shooter at the Jewish center. Um, That kicked off a very intense investigation. The suspect attended the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, and even did this interview. I want a homeland for white people. Just go ahead and lean up against the car for me. Nearly a thousand miles away in Daytona Beach, Florida, police there found their suspect in a Win Dixie parking lot. Do you have any uh, weapons you need to know about? The 25 year old is charged with making threats to commit a mass shooting after police obtained a series of text messages where he wrote, I want to open fire on a large crowd of people, and that he hoped to break a world record. These are just the latest in a series of threats across the country. All of it as communities are on heightened alert following the mass shootings in Dayton, Ohio and El Paso, Texas. How serious should law enforcement take these threats? Extremely serious. This is part of the contagion. These have been interrupted. Some of them may have never taken place, but others may have actually went to a mass killing. So we have to take them very seriously. The suspect in Ohio is being charged with telecommunications harassment and aggravated menacing. He's due in court for arraignment later today. Meantime, Bakersfield police also got some guns and ammunition off the streets this weekend. BPD says on Saturday, officers pulled over 38-year-old Saddam Mohammed on Butler Road just off Bell Terrace. They searched the car and found two loaded guns as well as ammunition. Officers figured out one of the guns was stolen, so they arrested Muhammad and booked him on several felony charges, including possession of a stolen property, weapons charges, and gang participation. A shooting in southwest Bakersfield over the weekend has people living in the Quailwood neighborhood on edge. BPD says it happened just before midnight Saturday on Remington Avenue, just across the street from Quailwood Elementary School. 
When officers arrived, they say a large party was breaking up. No one was hurt in the shooting, but cars in the area were hit by the gunfire. Officers found more than 60 shell casings in the area. BPD says there aren't any suspects, but officers are continuing to investigate. In response to the shooting, Bakersfield City Councilman Andre Gonzalez plans to hold a meeting tonight. He posted this message on social media inviting neighbors to come and express their concerns. It's happening at 6 o'clock in the Quellwood Elementary Multipurpose Room. A man's behind bars after he stabbed a Bakersfield police officer in the face with a screwdriver. It happened Saturday at Adventist Hospital. BPD says officers were talking to William Blystone when he got a hold of a screwdriver and allegedly started stabbing one of the officers in the face. Officers arrested Blystone and booked him on several charges, including attempted murder. The officer he stabbed was treated for minor injuries. Blystone's being held without bail and is due in court tomorrow. A man who escaped police after leading them on a chase is set to appear before a judge today. Last month, police tried to pull over Dion Hodge. They say he's a suspect in a number of shootings in Bakersfield, but Hodge led officers on a chase and got out of his car near Plans Park, then managed to escape. Police arrested Hodge in Sacramento Wednesday. He's being held on a $1.2 million bail. He's due in court for arraignment this afternoon. We'll have details on his appearance coming up tonight on 17 News at 5. Three businesses are destroyed after a fire ripped through a South Bakersfield strip mall. This is viewer video sent to us from Roy Pena, captured early yesterday morning. Bakersfield fire officials say they were called to the fire on Ming Avenue near Ash Road just before 2 a.m. It took crews about three hours to extinguish those flames. No one was hurt. And here's a look at the aftermath. Firefighters say the flames destroyed three businesses, organic nails and spa, hair shapers, and cherry berry quilts. A fourth grocery outlet is closed because of the damage. Electricians and other safety officials must inspect the store before it can reopen. Firefighters say the cause of the fire is likely electrical. That wasn't the only fire that crews battled this weekend. This one sent smoke billowing over Oildale Saturday afternoon. Kern County firefighters say the flame sparked accidentally when someone was cutting metal. At least two dozen cars burned as the grass fire spread. Firefighters say the flames were tough to battle because of the hot, windy weather. This all happened on private property near Chevron. The company says the fire did not affect any of its operations. And another fire pushed a family out of their home. This one happened Sunday in central Bakersfield. Fire crews say the family was able to get out of the burning building safely and no one was hurt. Arson investigators are now trying to figure out what caused the fire. Bakersfield police are looking to crack down on people driving under the influence. BPD is holding a DUI checkpoint tomorrow. It's scheduled to happen between 6 p.m. and midnight at an undisclosed location within city limits. And just a reminder, if you see a suspected drunk driver... Call 911. Summer vacation may be over, but there's always time for a quick getaway. Yeah, Kevin's on the road this morning showing you where you can go on a tank of gas. He'll also have your weekday forecast coming up after the break. And where's Kevin? He's on the road again. Yeah, let's uh, check in and see where he's at this morning for his tank of gas getaway. Good morning, Kev. Good morning, Maddie. Good morning, Alex. Yes, I've made my way about two hours out of Bakersfield here in Los Angeles, the heart of Los Angeles. I'm just off Wilshire Boulevard. I'm at Hancock Park, and you can see the sign behind me. Yes, I've made my way to La Brea Tar Pits. I had never been to this museum ever, so it was a good experience for me to go inside and see what it was all about, and I want to share it with you. Loaded up and on the road for another tank of gas getaway. This time we head south to Los Angeles. We skip the typical tour spots and explore the ice ages of the city at the La Brea Tar Pits. We have the only active ice age fossil excavation in the middle of a big city in the entire world. The La Brea Tar Pits are part of the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles. And when you enter, be prepared for an exhibition of mammoth proportions. Life-size replicas of animals who roamed the area thousands of years before us and what they would look like if they were here today. Museum staff is also on site to educate you about each animal and the time period in which they roamed the area. So in the past, um, this very area had saber-toothed cats and dire wolves and mammoths, Colombian mammoths and mastodons. There are active tar pits all over the grounds. Almost all are still active excavation sites like Pit 91. 
Here, scientists work daily to find new fossils in the pits. Oh man, five-year-old me is gleeful every single day that I get to come to work. Because, I mean, I, I get to play with all the pretty bones. It's wonderful. Once the bones are discovered, they are carefully removed and taken to an on-site lab. Here, crews remove tar, dirt, and other debris, surprising them at times on what has been found. I didn't realize it at the time, but it was a juvenile mastodon tooth. So it was a baby, basically a baby tooth of a mastodon. And I didn't even realize it was a baby tooth of a mastodon. But then I worked on it, and then my boss was like, hey, did you know that's the baby tooth of a mastodon? And I was like, no, that's really cool. Millions of fossils under one roof, taken from the ground in one general area in the heart of Los Angeles. History going back more than 50,000 years, covered by the seeping black tar. So much to see and do, and it's just a short drive from Bakersfield. The La Brea Tar Pits open daily, 9.30 to 5. The shelter is clear. Dozens of animals found their forever homes this weekend. They started their day Saturday in kennels at the Bakersfield Animal Care Center with no place to call home. But their lives changed for the better thanks to those people who came to their rescue. It was all part of NBC's annual Nationwide Clear the Shelters event. Members of the Circle 17 family and dozens of volunteers were on hand to help with the successful event. 83 pets were adopted at the Animal Care Center just Saturday, and more than 93,000 pets were adopted across the country. It what was, a cool day. It was so great being out there and just seeing all the dogs, you know, leave. Just it, it's so happy. You know, Tabitha, you were out there too. And yeah, it there, was, you know, what I love about it is that it truly was a dog for each of the people who took a dog home. Like, mm -hmm. they found the perfect fit for their family, mm -hmm. and it was so exciting to see little kids who got their mm -hmm. first puppy for the first time, or, you know, some people in our community who were looking for companions companion and found that perfect little friend cool. oh my gosh and then there was pork chop the little chihuahua i don't know if anybody met pork chop but stinking cute okay Aww. so cute i you know, think he's that name yeah and then so you know it's so good because you know so many of those dogs you know there's a lot of them that were there throughout the summer so yeah. as, as long as early yeah. may and they're home now well, so yeah. that's great like news. the dog that i sponsored um tiger he was there for six right. plus months right. wow and, like the perfect person came and adopted tiger she has lots of property for him to run in the okay. mountains and it's gonna be great so i've i am just I know Julie Johnson and the staff there at the oh, shelter yeah. are just above and beyond, but I, sure. you know, it's overwhelming. It I got is. a little emotional because it, oh, yeah, it was for great. Sure. It was Absolutely. It's really a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. All right, it's 521 now. Yeah, there are so many inspiring stories in our community, and KGT is teaming up with Adventist Health Bakersfield to highlight some of them. And it's a series we're calling Together Inspired. Tabitha joining us this morning with the latest. That's right. Lives are transformed every day by people in our community who care, taking action to better the lives of others. This morning, I introduce you to a new nonprofit doing just that. It's called A Dream Shared. We started this because our, our daughter was graduating high school and she has severe disabilities and we wanted something for her to do after high school. Charles and his wife Tina wanted more for their daughter Kelsey. We thought that a, you know, some kind of a business would be good for her to get out and, you know, be a part of the community and do things and, and have a, a meaning to life. So about a year ago, they started kicking around ideas. They landed on the idea of a nonprofit thrift store, one aimed at providing employment for people with special needs in our community. The name of their new venture, A Dream Shared. And now they can say, you know, I have a job and I do something and, you know, and there's meaning, you know, there's a reason to get up in the morning and something to look forward to. And Everyone is accepted here. The Herds partnering with agencies in Kern County to employ adults with disabilities, as well as those just in need of a second chance. They care about me. Like They, they want me to succeed. They want me to do good. They always push me into going to college. Um, he, Especially Charlie, he pushes me. He's like, when are you going to sign up for college? Uh, what are you going to take? Um, I want to do my vet tech program. That's what I want to do more than anything. But. Yeah, he's, he's really like, pushing me to do, to do something good. A beautiful dream shared. It gives uh, kids and adults um, here in the community a place to go to, a place to feel safe, a place to actually um, feel welcome. 
A dream shared accepts donations of all kinds, from clothes to furniture and more. The nonprofit off, uh, offers a free pickup service. It's located at 307 19th Street in downtown Bakersfield. So if you have anything lying around that you'd like to donate to a good cause, I mean, they're employing people, people in our community, giving them a purpose, and, and really helping out in a lot of ways, as you just heard. That is just so cool. <laughs> Thanks, Tab. <laughs> All right, well, the coffee is roasting, and now you can sip it a little earlier. A downtown business is extending its hours to make sure you get your caffeine fixed before heading off to work or school. Your 17 Business Watch is next.